So this week I released uh, two tour videos, one for the allotment and one for the back garden. And I was talking about how we're all planted now. And of course that's never strictly true. New space keeps on coming available uh, all the way through the year. And so I'm always planting. I don't like to see any bare soil really on the allotment or in the garden. Um, that's not 100% true. Occasionally I will leave a bed empty uh, just because I've got nothing suitable to plant or I want to get an early start, perhaps planting up in say February or March or something like that. Um, and so I might leave it free just for a couple of months. But generally speaking, I like to have beds planted. And so I'm always kind of just walking around the allotment, just seeing is everything earning its keep? Are there any little gaps opening up? And have I got any spares where I'm gonna plant them, things like that. So this week's been a little bit about like that. On Monday I decided that uh, there was no way I was gonna get any more decent sized courgettes off our plants. It's too cold now at night. So I took those plants out, did the last harvest, reconditioned the big containers that they're in, they're sort of this sort of size. Um, and in there went green garlic and spring onions, salad onions. So we harvest about, I don't know, 200, something like that, garlic bulbs a year. And out of those, there's always sort of 20, 30 perhaps that uh, are not really great quality. So some of those just get used first in the first few months. Um, and the rest of them get used for green garlic. And so they tend to be the bulbs that are a bit small or they're split. Um, or something like that. There's nothing wrong with them, they're gonna grow just fine. And when you're not bothered about nice big cloves next year, you can just use these little tiny cloves that uh, are no good for eating really, uh, but grow into perfectly acceptable green garlic. So we use a lot of those. It just means we don't waste anything basically. And we love green garlic. We think it's uh, the best bang for the buck really, because you take this horrible little bulb that's not gonna be used for anything, and from that you get this huge clump of garlic greens uh, which you can use basically as a, a spring leek so when your winter leeks are finished you know you get this you know probably you know about 10 probably small stemmed garlics uh, chop them up just use them just as you would use a leek in cooking you just get like a bit of a garlicky taste to them uh, and a little bit of a sweet taste as well so i, I always describe them really as a sweet leek with a bit of garlic taste and of course you can use the garlic bulb um, as well. Um, that's just a milder version basically of the mature garlic that you would get if you left them until June. So with green garlic, you're basically harvesting sort of April, May time. So last week I cleared my asparagus bed, chopped it down to about an inch uh, from the floor. And this week I mulched that with about an inch of compost. Uh, and that's all it needs really uh, to keep it going for next year. Um, I'm not gonna plant anything in it right now, but in March, perhaps as late as early April, I'll plant salad onions, spring onions. Um, I think they're a great interplant into uh, an asparagus bed because you're, as you're constantly harvesting the asparagus all the way through until sort of the middle of June time, um, they're not really creating any competition with anything else that you plant in that bed. Now in my asparagus bed, I've got two rows. So I've got a big area down the center and down the sides. So that's where I put my salad onions. Uh, I can put a lot of them in there. It's been, you know, it's a nice rich bed. There's plenty of nutrition in there. The asparagus of course is deep, very deep rooted. So it's taking its water from very deep down and its nutrients from de very deep down. So the spring onions don't really cause any competition at all. And basically that kind of harvested or the, the harvest period for the asparagus finishes just as you're harvesting the salad onions. And so when the uh, asparagus is left to grow on, uh, it would be too, it, there would be too much competition for, for light if you left your salad onions in there. But provided you're harvesting your salad onions in sort of, you know, the middle of June, uh, early July, there's no problem at all. So it's a great interplant. So on Tuesday, it was raining again. So I spent the morning cafe hopping and in the health club. And that is honestly, it's a great way uh, to spend a morning. But I did manage to get down to the allotment in the afternoon and I found some spare wood when I was tidying up. And I thought this would be perfect to make some little chocks 
for my cold frames and low tunnels. Now I've got nice big ones which are great in spring and early autumn. But when you're going through winter, you still need lots of ventilation, but you need a really rigid support to keep those um, cold frames open, uh, even when gales are blowing and things like that. So I made some little chocks and I was really pleased with them actually. I think uh, they're gonna make life a lot easier for me. Also planted, sowed, three big tubs of carrots. So I sowed Napoli, which I think are a great variety for overwintering. Um, and I'll sow another batch of Marion in early November. I really like doing carrots at this time of year. You've got to sow them. If you sow them much earlier than this, they'll just run to seed in early spring. But if you sow them now, or I'd say early November, so this sort of period, um, then they really don't grow very much. And so you end up with little tiny carrots over winter. Uh, and then they spring into life late February, early March. And you get them, you know, three weeks to a month earlier than you would get carrots if you started them in February. But also they're just much more reliable because they're starting in better weather and with higher light levels, they don't get as leggy uh, and they just get better established than anything that you're gonna do in February. In fact, pretty, you know, germination of carrots can be pretty unreliable in February, to be honest. And generally do any carrots until March, really, middle of March, early April, uh, because I've got these six big tubs uh, in the polytunnel. So when I got back home, uh, I've, I keep all the compost in my tomato tubs and I just recondition those, put a handful of blood fish and bone in there and a little bit of well rotted um, farmyard manure. And then in those tubs went the uh, green garlic, more green garlic. Uh, we can't get enough of the stuff. Well, basically we need um, about two tubs a week uh, for about two months, April and May. Um, and so, yeah, we need quite a bit to get any gardening at all done on Wednesday. Um, but we did manage to go to see No Time to Die at the cinema. We've got a lovely little cinema here actually, which is right on the seafront. And on the way back, it was a beautiful um, walk along the beach. And then later on in the evening, I actually went out and took some photos of the sunsets, which were really nice. And I was using a new phone. I've just got this new phone. It's an iPhone 12 Pro Max. And the reason I got that particular model is because it's got really good optical image stabilization, which really makes a difference if you're doing kind of walk and talk videos. I'm doing a lot more of those now. I really like to use the money that I get from YouTube uh, and from my Buy Me A Coffee site uh, to invest back into content creation or gardening tools or technology. It's basically investing back. Uh, into the people that uh, made the donations in the first place. So thanks very much for that and I hope you enjoy it. No gardening got done on Thursday, but I did go for a beautiful walk up in the Lake District along the west coast, west coast, west shore of Windermere. It's one of my favourite walks. If you've never done it before, you park at Bowness, you get the little ferry across to um, the west shore and then you can walk, I think it's best to walk up north, so walk north up the shore to Ambleside and then come back uh, on one of the steamers, pleasure steamers, from Waterhead back to Bowness. It's really lovely. It's got a really nice mix really of um, great scenery, lots of different, lots of varieties, so sort of marinas and lake views and forest views and mountain views and all of that. It's got the novelty of the ferry crossing and the relaxation and luxury of the steamer coming back um, to Bowness. I really like it, it's one of my favorite walks. The thing that really commends it to me at this time of year is that you can just do it in training shoes. There's no um, floods or you know overly muddy areas or anything like that. There's a nice cafe at um, Ray Castle and also at Waterhead, there's loads of cafes and at Ambleside, of course, and at Bowness. So there's plenty of opportunity for, you know, really pampering yourself. And I did do a, um, another walk and talk video while I was there as well. So you will see that in a month or so's time. So Friday, picking up a theme here, it was raining again in the morning. So I was again cafe hopping 
and I was actually writing the chapter of my book on adapting to climate change as gardeners adapting to climate change and so that is finished now and also the chapter that I've written on soil health living soils and all of that sort of thing that's finished they the text still needs to finish so I've just got to decorate those with videos and uh, photos and things like that and then I'll release those so uh, I was pretty pleased to get those done and I was back on the allotment in the afternoon and what I got done was I just went through all the beds looking for any seedlings that I died and I always get about 5% of die off normally it's slugs and snails that uh, are causing the problem um, so I replaced those with spares so all my beds are fully planted again rain has also meant lots of high winds and so there's quite a few plants blown over you know the strings are broken or whatever so I put new supports in for those and so everything is ready because we're going to have quite a bit of wind next week again so it's always nice to keep on top of all of those little maintenance jobs that's why I generally do try to get to the allotment at least every other day for at least an hour just have a quick walk around I also like to walk around the site and I find it's the most interesting walk in the local area it's not the most beautiful one but it's most interesting because things are always changing on an allotment site there's always people to talk to and things like that so uh, it's a great way to uh, get a few steps in not quite as pretty as the amazing walk that I did in the morning on the beach and again just th these showery the showery weather is just fantastic for beach views and uh, so I had a really nice walk through the dunes and then back along the beach before I went to the health club. So it was a, a really fantastic morning. Saturday today and I've just done the harvest and my daughter, one of my many daughters actually joined me on the allotment with her dog, Winnie. And we walked around and did all the root harvesting together. I think Winnie wanted to probably eat the roots, but uh, managed to contain her. And yeah, it was another lovely harvest. It is a bit tricky at this time of year because I am always trying to balance uh, having enough for winter with having enough right now because I'm clearing beds that I could be eating, harvesting from but I'm clearing them to get them replanted because my bias is generally to have planting in the ground for winter and just let this time of year look after itself you know generally in autumn there's almost always enough to eat it might not be exactly the mix of food that you want but there's always enough to eat whereas in winter that can be a bit of a challenge if you kind of over protect your uh, harvests in autumn so i'm for example rapidly clearing uh, space in the polytunnel that did have the plants in it that could have carried on harvesting for two or three weeks but I've really got to start lettuces and spinach and things like that in those beds now, otherwise they won't be ready for winter. So that's just my bias all the time now, is always investing for winter. So uh, anyway, I was pleased to get that harvest done. It's another nice harvest, I'll just show you that now. So here's a quick look at today's harvest. And as you can see, we're really cutting back now. Everything fits nicely on the harvest table. And hopefully this is going to carry on now uh, through until spring so let's have a quick skim through what we've got so we've got salads I've got some red vein sorrel actually in this salad mix as well this week which is quite nice trying to up the number of different types of leaves that I've got ideally I'd like to get to 12 different types of leaves but I don't think I'll get there this year and then we've got spinach and because we're transitioning we've got lots of beds of baby spinach right now but not that much mature spinach so just three tubs of that and so it's nice to have these extra field bean shoots which we've had now for about a month I guess and they're just helping to fill the gap whilst the uh, spinach matures we've got collects there and tatsoi and patchoy, red patchoy underneath there, salad onions, radishes, and then all the different brassica leaves underneath the peppers. And this week we've got 
red Brussels sprouts, green Brussels sprouts, Carvalho Nero, Colette's, perennial kale, and green curly kale, I think. Those are all the brassica leaves we've got. Um, obviously these red peppers looking absolutely lovely. That, we didn't actually harvest those this week. These are just off our ripening table. And we've actually got quite a lot more than that. Just don't want to clutter the table up. Some gorgeous chard, a bit more spinach, some parsley, uh, fruit, and snow apples, otherwise known as turnips. And these are just out of the store then. So we've got onions, red and white, beetroot, um, cooking apple, or for baking actually, baby beets, uh, Jerusalem artichokes, ochre. So I did pick one of my ochre plants because I'm getting lots of questions about what my ochre is like. And you can see it's quite small because it's picked too early. So ideally you would pick it two, three weeks after the foliage has died down, after the frost. Um, and obviously I picked that just before, but that's a good indication of the size of the harvest from a single plant and I would expect it to be at least a third more than that once these have swollen um, because they absorb the nutrients and juices basically from the stems or cast these really thick uh, succulent stems so that's what happens after the first frost what else have we got here? Celeriac, garlic obviously from the store, shallots from the store, more celeriac. These are my baby leeks. So these were sown like that, four to a module, planted underneath the Brussels sprouts. So they didn't actually have any dedicated space. They were just in the gaps that are naturally there between the sprout plants. I'm really pleased with those. It's just a bonus crop for us. It's a great little interplant. They do get a bit bent, obviously, as you can see there, uh, and they never really th thicken up too much. That's good enough. And some baby parsnips. And then the weeks, potatoes to give away. The ones that we're eating are still in the store and the carrots. So these are the carrots now that are starting to be picked from the ground rather than the containers. And you can see good sizes on those, a little bit of forking on some of them, but that doesn't matter to anybody. And some dried apples. So I think that is pretty much everything that uh, we're harvesting this week. Another lovely harvest, quite pleased with that. And there's the salads. All finished, ready for packing. So on Sunday, it's my strength workout on uh, in the gym, and so I really look forward to that. I only do a high intensity workout; it doesn't take me very long. And I go for a nice swim, and I'm back on the allotment and just getting those beds cleared and replanted in the polytunnel. And so you can see, gardening-wise, really there is not very much going on. Just a little tiny bit of seed sowing, a little tiny bit of planting just a little tiny bit of weed in, maintenance basically, maintenance mode, very, very relaxing time of year for me, especially when it's not raining and I can get out hiking, cycling, etc. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this quick video. My name's Steve, this is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel, and you might be listening to this because this is there's also a podcast version of this, and it's called the Gardening Week Podcast. Uh, and you can find that where all good podcasts are found, or nearly all anyway. See you soon.